Apple is all about privacy, or so they say. But if privacy is so automatic, then why are there so many privacy settings on your iPhone? And your iPhone is full of apps from other companies that might have access to your information in brand new ways. Thank you, Apple Intelligence. So we're gonna start with a setting that is so secure that Apple didn't even bother to tell you, or me, that they turned it on in October of 2024. Let's dive in. I'll tap to open settings, and then I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom to tap on apps. Then at the search at the top, I'm gonna to type in photos and choose the main photos app. Now, all the way at the bottom is enhanced visual search. I don't like it when Apple just rolls out a feature that uploads my photos encrypted or not, and then analyzes them. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Also probably gonna save some battery life. Next up, a setting that was supposed to solve all of our messaging problems, but then the FBI came out and said, hey, don't use this. Let's head there and then I'll explain what the problem is. So I'll tap back to apps in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, come back up here to the search. I'm gonna tap the X to get rid of photo, type in messages or just mess and tap to open messages. Now I'm gonna scroll down, tap on RCS messaging and make sure that RCS messaging is turned on. Even though I'm not gonna recommend you turn it off, you do need to understand one very important thing. Although RCS messaging is encrypted between Android phones, it is not encrypted when an Android is sending a message to an iPhone or vice versa. So it really didn't improve privacy between iPhones and Androids at all at least not at this point. So leave RCS messaging turned on, but just know that it isn't as secure as iMessages yet. Next, we're gonna talk about Apple intelligence. So tap back to messages in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, tap back to apps, cancel out of that, tap back to settings in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, and then scroll up to Apple intelligence and Siri and tap on that. I recommend leaving Apple Intelligence turned on because it really does unlock some cool features on your phone. But remember that Apple wants all the apps on your iPhone to work seamlessly together. But for that to happen, apps need to be able to share information with each other. But do you really want your banking app to be able to share information with Facebook, for instance? Now, I'm not saying this is happening, but I can foresee a future where somebody might know it's your payday and therefore hit you with ads for more expensive products. If I were a Facebook advertiser, I'd be wondering if I could do that. I'm not saying that's happening, but let's just shut that down. Scroll down to apps at the very bottom. Tap on that. Now I use Bank of America. I'll come down to B of A. Tap on that. And I'm gonna turn off all of these switches. Not only do I not want Siri to learn from how I use my banking app, I also don't want them sending information like my contacts and other data to Apple to process my requests. I want my banking app to be private. I'll tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen to apps. And if you use other apps where you don't want that information to be shared, well then go through this list, find those apps, turn off the switches for just that app. Next, I'll tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen and back again to settings. Now I'm going to scroll down and tap on search and make sure the switch next to help Apple improve search is turned off. Why turn this off? Well, I don't want Apple to store the searches I enter into Safari, Siri, and Spotlight, even if it's in a way that isn't linked to me personally. No thanks. Next, let's tap back to settings in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, scroll all the way to the top, and then tap on your name at the top. Then tap sign in and security. And make sure that the emails and phone numbers you see here at the top are indeed your emails and phone numbers. If you don't recognize one of them, tap on it, remove it, and change your password right away. Next, we'll tap back and scroll down to iCloud, tap on that, at the top here, you'll see I have a suggestion. My iPhone wants me to turn on iCloud Private Relay, which is a feature I pay for, but I choose to leave it off. The problem with huge tech companies is not that they want your money, it's that they want to know everything about you. And your phone is the perfect way for them to get that information. They're not selling a product, they're selling you. 
But there is a way for you to keep your online activity truly private, and I use it every day. It's an app called ExpressVPN, and it's super easy to use. I'll swipe up from the bottom of the screen, then tap to open the ExpressVPN app. In fact, I've been using it for this entire video. It really is just as simple as hitting the giant power button here. You could disconnect, reconnect, and check this out. If I tap Upgrades at the bottom, tap Advanced Protection here at the top, I can block trackers, malicious sites, block ads, and block adult sites just by turning on these four switches. No more ad blockers necessary. Find out how you can get four months free by scanning the QR code on screen, clicking the link in the description box below, or by going to expressvpn.com slash payet. Next setting. Let's tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen and back again to the main page of settings. Scroll down to privacy and security. Tap on that. Now we're gonna use a feature that I didn't love at first, but has quickly become perhaps my favorite Apple setting ever. Scroll down here to safety check. Tap on that. Then tap manage sharing and access. I love this setting because it streamlines what used to be a pretty tedious process. Tap continue at the bottom. First, sharing with people. Look through the list. If there's somebody you don't recognize or haven't talked to in a while, Let's see, a couple people. I'll tap Review Sharing, choose what I want to stop sharing, and just tap Stop Sharing. Bang. It brings me to the next person. Boom. I don't want to share the photos anymore. Tap Shopped Sharing. Shop Sharing. I just don't sh 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 stop sharing. That's not how you say it. Tap Stop Sharing. Next, select what you would like to stop sharing publicly. Tap Photos, Stop Sharing, Stop Sharing. Okay, step one is complete. Next, tap continue. I love this because instead of separating it, if I tap information by location, Bluetooth, microphone, everything's separate, we now go by app because typically I know which apps I trust and which apps I don't trust. And I wanna be able to shut off all the permissions for a specific app all at the same time, not have to go through multiple menus. You get the point. So let me scroll down. Sound connect, for instance. It doesn't need to know my location. Hoopla probably doesn't need to know my location at least. And let's see, decibel X. I've selected a few. I'll tap stop app access. Now I've secured my phone from those specific apps. Tap continue. Now we're gonna review devices connected to your Apple account. Tap continue again. And just take a quick scroll through this list. Make sure that all these devices look familiar and belong to you. Tap skip. Update Apple account password. Always a good idea to do if you want to annoy yourself or secure your account. In my case, I'll tap update later in settings. Emergency SOS, the people I care about are in this list. I can tap continue at the bottom. Synced computers is also important. Make sure you recognize the computer, it's that one. I'll tap skip. iPhone can be accessed by other devices. This has to do with the new screen mirroring feature on Mac. I'll tap skip because I do recognize it. Update device passcode, new passcode, more secure. Tap update later in settings. iCloud private relay, ExpressVPN is better. Tap skip. Safety check complete, tap done. That is a lot simpler than the process used to be. And I went pretty quick through there. If you'd like to download and print a PDF guide of all the settings we talk about in this video, well, it's easy. Just tap the join button below this video and you could follow along at your own pace. Let's tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Scroll down to analytics and improvements. Tap on that. Apple may be good at protecting your privacy, but I still don't want to be sending a ton of information about how I use my phone to Apple or other app developers. So I'll tap the switch at the top of the screen to turn this off. Tap OK. And then I'm gonna go through the rest of the list and turn off all these other switches too. Tap, 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 tap. And that's it. It's got a safe battery life too, because your phone is doing less work collecting and sending this data in the background. Tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Then tap Apple Advertising, and let's turn off the switch next to Personalized Ads. Next, let's tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, back again to Settings, scroll to the bottom, tap on Apps, and we're actually gonna head back to Messages. Tap on that. 
Next, scroll down all the way to text message forwarding and tap on that. Make sure you recognize all of these devices because your text messages are also being sent there. And a similar issue can happen in the phone app. Let's tap back and then back again to apps. Tap the X here to close out of messages. Let's open up the phone apps settings. Then we're gonna scroll down, tap calls on other devices. And make sure you recognize these computers because they can make and receive phone calls just like your phone can, as long as it's nearby. Next, let's head back. And one of my favorite features, tap back to apps, tap cancel, tap back to settings. Let's open up face ID and passcode. I'll type in my passcode here. Scroll down and turn on the switch next to require attention for face ID. This makes sure that you're looking at your iPhone actively before it unlocks your iPhone. So somebody can't just run up to you with a phone when you're taking a nap on the couch and then get into all your personal information. And a little down from there is stolen device protection. Tap and then tap that switch to turn it on. Stolen device protection is designed to protect you from people who know your passcode, like family members who might steal your phone, run away, and go to change your Apple account password so that you're totally locked out of all your stuff. What this does is add an hour delay before they can make those kinds of changes. And the idea is that in the meantime, you can go to iCloud.com find to use the Find My app to lock your device and then hopefully get it back or call your mom because your brother stole your phone. I get it. I'll tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, back to settings, scroll to the very top, and tap on family. Make sure that you recognize all the people in here that are part of your family, because as part of your family, things may be being shared. For instance, you can check location sharing and make sure that you're not sharing location with family members you might not want to be sharing your location with. Does that make sense? Then I can tap back in the upper left-hand corner again, go back to settings, it's location setting in a different location, tap privacy and security, tap location services, tap share my location, and then if you see that you're sharing your location with people you don't wanna be, you can remove them here. If you're watching this video because you believe you're being tracked right now, you can turn on what's called lockdown mode, which really is not necessary for most people, but I'll show you where it is just in case. Tap back and then back to the main privacy and security page. Scroll to the bottom, tap lockdown mode, and then tap turn on lockdown mode. When you turn on lockdown mode, a lot of things get shut off. Like you can no longer receive FaceTime calls from numbers that you haven't called before and images no longer work in messages. It's kind of extreme, but it really does a lot to cut your iPhone off from any potential threats. Obviously, privacy is a hot button issue nowadays, and there's only so much Apple can do to protect you. There's only so much you could do to protect you, but I guess the best we can do is set up our phones so that we know what's being shared with other apps and other companies and advertisers because God knows we can't plug every hole in the ship, but maybe we can plug enough holes for the ship to stop sinking so you can stay afloat and lake privacy. How about that for a sign off? Roll credits. Oh wait, we don't have credits. Bye.